Ciao everyone, I'm Rosella Rago and welcome to Cooking with Nonna. I have a very special guest here today, Nonna Gilda, welcome. Ciao a tutti, buongiorno. Sono qui nella cucina di Rosella di Cooking with Nonna. <laughs> uh, Nonna Gilda, where are you from? I am from uh, Polena, Trocchia, provincia di Napoli. È un paesetto piccolo proprio ai piedi del Monte Somma, eh, vicino al, al famoso Vesuvio. So, in Italian, she's from a little town in Naples, right near the, uh, the volcano right, of Vesuvius. Right. And we are gearing up for Easter here at Cooking with Nonna. So, what did you bring us okay, today for this Easter Sunday? I brought a very traditional uh, cake that we used to do for Easter, and it's called pastiera. Pastiera di grano in Italian. It's a uh, uh, wheat berry cake. So who hasn't heard of La Pastiera Napoletana? It's a very famous cake from the Naples region. And uh, it's typically made for Easter Sunday. You actually, there's a little bit of a rule that you have to make it no later than Good and Friday. Exactly. We usually mm -hmm. used to bake on Good Thursday. And, uh, you know, also because we have everything ready, you can do everything last minute. But it's a must have for Easter. For, especially for Neapolitans. <laughs> so you make it on Thursday or Friday because you want those uh, couple days for all the flavors to come together. Right. You want your pastiera to rest a few days so all the flavors are very are explosive. And it's delicious if you leave it out and at room temperature, yes. Right, so like we say a lot in Cooking with Nona, a lot of dishes are consumed at room temperature because refrigeration was not big back in the day. Exactly, so, so that's another reason. Yeah. They had to figure out a way to pr keep things, uh, to make a lot of things that were edible at room temperature. This right. is one of them. It's a very, very famous cake. I love that it's not too sweet. It's not one of the sweeter exactly. things. Exactly. It's, it's very mild. It's mild and it is a little bit, involves a little bit of work, but it's worth it at the end uh -huh. when you but taste it. Yes. Nonna's no, are not afraid of work, no, right? No, I got everything under control. Okay, <laughs> so what do we want to do first? Uh, we're going to start with the dough. We're going to prepare okay. the dough, okay? So we go, I, first thing, I'm going to take off my rings. Of course, yeah. Take <laughs> off I, your jewelry. I don't want them to, you know, to get all messed up. And then we start <laughs> with the flour. Okay, so we're going to start with the flour. And Nonna Gilda likes to make a well. Okay. Then we're going to add the eggs. So we're going to add three eggs. Just remember for exact measurements and the exact recipe, just head to cookingwithnonna.com. Okay, two and three. Okay. Put that away. Okay, now we had a little dash of salt. You want a little bit of salt. This is going to be a sweeter dough for right. a and sweeter it also, crust. It helps to, the dough rise a little better. We always need right. a little pinch of salt in the recipes. So we're going to add a little bit of shortening. And um, in older times, they would use lard instead of shortening. But you really want some kind of shortening or lard to... Like a vegetable yeah, or something. Yeah, it makes it very right. flaky. Not a thick flavor of uh, lard, okay? Then we need some sugar. And we're going to mix this with our hands? Yes, I make with my hands. I mean, some <laughs> people can, use, can do other methods, but I'm used to make with my However hands. However you're comfortable. And, and we, we have some lemon zest. Lemon is the number one flavor yes. of Napoli. Yes. Okay, I think we got everything we needed to start working, start working the dough. There we go. This is the hard part. <laughs> Do you want me to help you? No. No? I, I think okay. It's, I think it's about <laughs> a one hand in here. <laughs> so you just grab just it. Just grab everything together, break the eggs, and then work everything else in nice and slow. I just started with one hand, and then mm -hmm. when it's uh, got a little bit of body, and then I start using my other hand and... And it starts to form a dough rather quickly. Right. And we make it into an Easter tradition. Yeah. And I mean, the nuns had a lot of time right. to make things like this. They had, a lot, they had more money than a lot of people. So if you wanted to buy a pastiera from someone, you probably wouldn't go to a bakery. You would go to the <laughs> convent and say, hey, girls. I don't know if they still do that now. I don't know <laughs> if they're, if they're as, a, as adept at baking anymore. But, uh, but back then, they definitely were. They, they were the ones who invented the sfogliatella. Exactly. You know, yes, I heard they that. They invented, like, the baba room. And actually, funny story about that was that the sfogliatella was invented in, Conca in, uh, in Santa Rosa. 
Oh. In Santa Rosa by, by the Amalfi Coast. Sí, and Rosales knows a lot more than me. <laughs> well, it was very interesting because yeah. nuns would make the sfogliatelle and then there were, there were uh, monks farther away that created the Baba, uh, the Baba room. So the way they would want to communicate with each other is that the nuns would send the monks a sfogliatella and the monks would send the nuns <laughs> That's a cute a story. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how they would talk to each other. That's how the whole thing started? Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it all, believe it or not. Okay, we got it down to... So we have a dough now. And yeah. at this point, it's very, very important that you keep kneading the dough. No, not Gilda's hands are very, very strong. Yes, now. And <laughs> also, we're going to wrap in a serena wrap and put in the refrigerator for a couple, a little while, a couple of hours because it has to rest. Mm -hmm. And when we take it out, we still have to work a little more. <laughs> okay, this okay. is ready to go. So we're going to wrap this up, let it hang out in the fridge for a couple hours, and we'll see you when we get back. My name is Gilda Castello Taormina. Uh, I'm from um, a little town outside Naples called Polina Trocchia. I have uh, four grandchildren. I have uh, three grandsons and one little granddaughter. Okay, so we have our right. dough there we go. fresh from the fridge. It's okay. nice and cold. Yes, nice and cold. It should be nice to work with. So now we're going to take a little piece and put it aside for the... For the lattice top. For the little the strips on the top. I don't know if that's enough. Yeah, I think so. I think so. It's okay. Yeah, I okay. think so. If we have any left over from here, we'll use it for that. Okay. Okay? So now we have to roll this out. I'll start with my hand a little bit first. And then I'm going to use the rolling pin. So you just want to flatten it out, yes. and you don't want to roll this out too thick. You don't want the crust no. to be too the, thick on the, this. One thing about pastiera, the, for the, the pastry outside is supposed to be very thin. Because mm -hmm. we want it to flavor, we want it to taste everything that's inside, and not only... Taste that ricotta filling. Right, right. That's the best part. And it's a muscle to do this. <laughs> yeah, you're very strong. How many kids did you have? Two. I two. Two. Two girls. Wow. And Two girls who gave me four beautiful grandchildren, <laughs> three boys and one girl. And you have a special deal with one of your grandchildren, oh, yes. right? My oldest grandson named Justin. Uh, I always talk to him about Italy, where Nonna comes from. So we sat down one day last year and we made a contract. We, uh, I told him that when he's 18 and he's good in school and graduated in high school, I will take him to Italy. I want to take this trip with my grandson. But you signed a real contract, yes, right? Yes, we brought it, we, <laughs> we dated it, we signed it, and, uh, and then we put it away in a safe place with all the other important documents. And, uh, but maybe we'll take that trip a little earlier. Yeah, it you looks know. like, who knows? Not later, <laughs> but earlier is okay. Yes. So Nonna Gilda is going to finish working all her magic on our <laughs> pie crust, and we'll come back when it's all rolled out. Okay. Oh, in those days, it wasn't really, I mean, uh, there wasn't, we didn't have a big supermarket. There were little stores there. And uh, at the beginning, like my brothers used to go there, the oldest. So my mom used to send them shopping until we got a little older. We had to walk to a grocery store. But it's also, there was uh, later around, there's people come around with a little, uh, una un carretto, qualche volta with all the produce, vegetables, and fruit. And uh, some other with the fish. They used to come around in uh, uh, every street in the town. And that's when my mom used to buy some stuff. Okay, so now we've rolled out our pastiera dough. Yes, I think we got it right. And, it's uh, not a perfect circle, but that's no, okay. No, that's okay. As, as long, long as it fits. <laughs> as long as it fits the pin. Okay. So now we're going to roll it onto a rolling pin. And we're going to put it into the pin. A pin already greased with some, yeah. uh, shortening. some shortening. There we go. This is a nine-inch pie pan. Uh, great. That looks wonderful. So now we have our little tools to help us. Okay, make sure the bottom, there's no bubbles, yeah. no here and there. Bubbles. If it's anything sticking up, you want to make sure it fits nicely. You have enough dough. If the tool, we got to put the strips on it. Yeah, so this we can add to our strips. So this, I'm going to slice. I'm just going to go with this little mini yeah. pizza cutter. Go ahead. You do that. <laughs> you could do this with a really sharp knife, too. But this, I just like. I think it's easier. OK. There we go. Very nice. OK. Now we're going to start working with the feelings, OK? OK. All so the I'm good, just gonna... oh, now all the good stuff has got to <laughs> go inside. <laughs> 
Okay, we're going to use this bowl to start. We start we're going to start with the eggs. Okay. So you have some eggs just beaten? Yes. And if you, you now you look at uh, the recipe on the website and we know all the measurements. This is what we're doing now. This makes two pies, two nine inches pies. And we're just going to fill one? Yes. Okay, with some sugar. We hit the sugar. Uh, some ricotta. Yes, um, a spoon here. Use this. Okay. Put it in? Yes. Okay. Mm, this is whole ricotta. milk ricotta. Delicious. And this is ready now for all the other ingredients. So we're going to add our wheat berries. Yes. So uh, pastiera, uh, wheat berries for pastiera, you can buy them in a jar where the, um, they're already cooked. Uh, it actually, you can find it under Grano Cotto. There are companies like Annalisa that make uh, prepared wheat berries for pastiera. But we just boiled some wheat berries. It probably could you boil it for about a half hour, a little bit longer, until it gets a little softer. Mm -hmm. And you can do this the night before. Okay, now we had going to have some cinnamon, some little cinnamon, a little vanilla extract, and some orange extract. Yes, really wonderful citrus flavors going on here. Very Neapolitan with the yeah. citrus. Yep, <laughs> we gotta have that. And if you can find this citron uh, in Italiano, il cedro, mm -hmm. uh, you can put some uh, frutta candida. Yeah, so uh, cedro or citron is those really, really big lemons that you see in uh, the Amalfi Coast area. And Sorrento. If you've ever gone to Sorrento or Pompeii, you see very, very big lemons. And they're not lemons at all. That, that skin is very, very thick. thick and those are all dark green. Also. Yeah, and yeah. they come in a variation from yellows to greens. And uh, this is the candied peel of that. So if you can't find that, just find some candied fruits. Yes. Omit it, it totally. It's still going to taste great. It's whatever you like. So yes. It's that. not, it's a, a, a optional, but yeah. it is good in it. Okay. Get, get all those pieces in there. Okay. Now again, we have all the ingredients here, except the egg whites that we're going to have to beat those and put it in for last. Okay. Now, you beat your egg whites separately because you want them nice and fluffy. Right. That's going to give a nice, light texture to your pastiera. Yes. Okay, so we're ready for this. I'm going to set this right over here. We're going to get our electric mixer out. I'm going to, let me see. Put this away. How do we do this, Rosella? Okay. You want me to do it? Yes. Okay, no problem. <laughs> it's your kitchen, your tools. <laughs> so these aren't a lot of egg whites, so this should just take a minute or two to uh, get all nice and fluffy. We don't want to beat them to stiff peaks. You want them to be soft. They have to be very, there's got to be no egg white left, like it's got to yeah. be all foam. Very okay. soft, yes. Okay. Sometimes so can... uh, you do by hand, which is a lot of work. It's better to do with the mixer. Yeah, let's, <laughs> let's take a little bit of a shortcut. So we're gonna come right back once our egg whites are nice and fluffy. When I learned how to cook, I was very young because I was always interested in, in the kitchen. I always like to learn to make things. I would say maybe I started seven, eight years old. Started watching my mom. I wanted to see everything she was doing. I like to be in the kitchen. I cook with uh, my daughters first. You know, I taught them how to cook, how to bake, and I also try to teach my grandchildren. They every year that we bake together, and they used to wait for the holidays and no, no, what's coming next? Uh, uh, Christmas and then Easter and then Valentine. So we do special things for each holidays, yes. Okay, so we whipped our egg whites. Okay, these are ready. They're soft. We get rid of the mixer. And we're ready to fold this into the rest of our pastilla filling. Okay. So, all at once? Yes. Okay. Well, so we just mix it nice and slow so everything gets amalgamated together. Yeah. And you want to be careful mixing egg whites into, uh, into other fillings because you don't want to deflate the egg whites. What we did was uh, whip air into the egg white, so we don't want to deflate that. <laughs> this is what my mom used to make, my nonna used to make. It's and not Easter without a pastiera. No, on the table. absolutely not. Pastiera, pizza china, tutte quelle altre cose. And I used to tell my mom, Mama, please wait for me to come from school. Don't stop baking without me. Aww. <laughs> That's how I learned by watching her. <laughs> That's how you learned? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. And now we are ready to fill our pastiera crust. Okay. Okay. Great. 
Okay, so your last step here is just to make a nice little lattice. We're going to put this over here, and we're going to come back to that dough that we set aside specifically for this. We gotta roll it again. We gotta roll this out again, okay? And then Entire, we, do you want me to try? Go ahead, Rochelle, okay. it's stronger than me. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna cut into little strips to put a crisscross um, on top of the pie. And that's the last step. Actually, the last step is to put it in the oven. <laughs> I think we're gonna need a little bit more dough. Yes. So we're gonna use that piece of dough. Yes, that comes handy, that's why yeah. we saved that. We'll take turns if you get tired. Okay, okay I think I got it. <laughs> Mm, this tastes delicious. <laughs> so, is this uh, one of your tools? No. No? no. Is this, this is your tool. <laughs> you don't have something like this? Well, I have a rolling pin, which is very special. <laughs> that, uh, I took it from Italy with my mom. After my mom passed away, I took some little kitchen tools that uh, I like to use. It, and remembers, it reminds me of her. An Italian woman's rolling pin is rarely a rolling pin that she bought from a store. It's usually the leg of a table yeah, or right. a chair uh -huh. or a broom handle well, mine or a mop. Is, exactly. Mine is something similar to this, a little bit a little thicker, but uh, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> they used to improvise with the tools and with everything else. You had and to. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make it a little bit this way. And I'm going to make these strips a little bit thinner. Yes. So we rolled out the dough for our lattice top, and we're going to start cutting them out. I have a ravioli cutter, okay. and I'm going to go for strips that are about an inch wide. We'll save those pieces in yeah. case we need it just a little bit stronger. And I'm going to roll out ten, so I'm going to do five one way and five the other way. So this is a job that you should make one of your grandchildren do. Yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can trust to do something like this. No. <laughs> I'm going to wait for my granddaughter to get a little older because the boys are kind of getting away from my kitchen. <laughs> I lost my baking partners. <laughs> ah, I can only get eight out of this. Okay. We okay. probably can use one of that, that little piece there for the little one at the end. Uh, I'm going to give you two that. short ones. <laughs> okay. Perfect. I'm going to use those shorter pieces for the outside since it's okay. calls for a shorter part. Do we have enough? Perfect. Yeah, I think we have okay. just enough. We utilize all the dough. We did. We don't waste. No. Nope. We don't waste around here. Okay. That's it. Perfect. Beautiful. Okay. So now we're going to press these into the existing crust that we have. Okay. okay. There you go. go around with our little pizza cutter again. That's your special tool. Yeah. <laughs> So this is ready to go into a 350 degree oven for about an hour until you get a nice golden brown color on your ricotta. And yes. I'm so excited it to takes. come back and taste this. The oven ready? Yeah, the Let's, oven's ready. Let's go. I came to America the first time in uh, 1969 when uh, my brother got married. He got married here. And uh, so my whole family came for the first time and I fell in love with uh, America. <laughs> I liked the way they lived here. and. Uh, so I met my husband, Harris. Actually, I met him previously. He came to Italy on a vacation, and we met in Naples. And then I came back here, and we met again, and that's how I end up here. <laughs> the sparks <laughs> began then. <laughs> I really don't have that many secrets. Um, actually, I'm very honest, very open. I help people out, giving a few little tips to how to make things better. And like my advice would be, use your, your imagination, your creativity, uh, sometimes I follow the recipe. You can also add something of your own, make it a little more personal. It won't, it won't hurt. <laughs> so this is our beautiful pastiera. Came out perfect. <laughs> Cooked really perfectly. The beautiful golden brown right. all over the ricotta filling. Can't wait to try yes, some. Yes, let's go. <laughs> okay, so you want to cut into your ricotta with a very, very sharp serrated edge knife. And you want to make sure you get all the way down to the bottom because your crust can crack here. And I'm all about the beautiful dessert. You don't want to leave anything in there? We no. Want, we want to taste no, all of it. No, we can't waste. <laughs> so you want to cut out a nice slice. Okay. There we go. Perfect color. Beautiful. Oh, that looks so Beautiful. great. <laughs> okay. Okay, let's have And you're going to taste some, Nona? Sure. Here you go. Let's dig in. Go ahead. Oh, 
Uf, mm. deliciosa. What do you think? Mm. That is Buona. so, so good. Yeah, if, if it crumbs because it's fresh and it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's got all that the fresh and the delicious taste. That's why letting it sit for a couple days really right. helps it solidify. But this is wonderful. I love the taste of the citrus and the Perfect. ricotta. Perfect. Got a delicious taste. I uh, hope everybody find it easy to make it. And uh, buona Pasqua. Buona Pasqua. Thank you for being my nonna today. Oh, you're welcome. Mwah. It was a pleasure. Buona Pasqua.